So, President Takahara, thank you very much for coming and congratulations on winning the Porter Prize. So, in Pro Professor Noma's presentation mentioned, so Unicharm is actually a hidden global company. In terms of the sales, 70% of it is actually earned outside Japan. And so B2B sales like a semiconductor and electronics products, uh, these companies exist in Japan, but you are producing and find, uh, selling uh, consumables and your business is globalized rapidly. And also you are focusing on Asian countries and that's one of the characteristics of your business. And of course, the Japanese market will saturate be saturated. So companies say that they are looking for uh, growth markets that have growth potential, but I think your company is very unique. And I think that looking back, you made a drastic decision, but how do you feel about your decision and how your business progressed so far? Well, before that, the Porter Prize was established in 2001, and that's the year when I became the president and CEO, and it's been 23 years. And after 23 years, finally, I was able to be seated in this seat. And actually we applied and we were not selected. And as I listen to you, you have different uh, topics and uh, the Unicharm was established as a company in, 19, in the uh, 1980s and it was the rapid economic growth area. And we actually started out as a construction material company and there were the storied uh, parking uh, buildings and we procured the construction material called the panel. And uh, that business didn't go well. And we had about 30 years of history and we wondered what to do. And as Professor Kusunoki said, so we thought that Asia will be the market that has growth potential, but you need to have the management resource, the people and goods and money. And what we did first was that, including the establishment of the company, there are, so we had the different uh, remaining remnants of the business in the diversification. You were engaged in service as well. For example, the matchmaking for people looking for marriage partners, and also we at the, the education for children and also tourism. And we constructed the to towers at the time when the Seto Bridge was, Seto Ohashi Bridge was constructed. So we had our business diversified and we set our business and we organized and we pay back our debt. And together with the employees that we had at the time, we thought about the future in mid to long term and we created the plan and we selected the important employees and we we organized the portfolio and we set the mid to long term target plans and we looked at the demographics and we had this uh, selection and also concentration and we looked at the demographics and in japan after the rapid economic growth the number of children started to decline so we in asia they had a lot of people but they didn't have the economic power yet so we went into asean countries india and china and we're thinking about expanding our business in africa but what we do in our business is not necessarily compli complicated but the key is finding the growth areas and moving into that area and continue doing that and today so you have this convergence of business and you use the non-woven fabric for absor create absorption and also the pet uh, 
area, the companion animal area. And what's interesting is that you are focusing on women and you create and increase the lifetime value of your uh, company's products. And can you explain that a little bit? Why did you decide to do that? So consumers include babies and also the elderly. And we manufacture and sell consumables. So we have this seamless uh, timeline to accompany consumers. And that is actually efficient as a branding. So we focus on women. And because that it's not necessarily about the gender gap, but the idea that women come up with for companies like ours that manufactures the consumables, the women consumers are the ones who are opinionated and they would give us uh, feedback. And when you try to measure the trend, then women tend to be more vocal. And so I think that women have potential growth. So the efficient for the business and also the growth potential. So placing the priority and emphasis on women that will be right for us uh, in terms of the uh, development of diapers and also the senior care, the elderly care. Even though we see the decline of birth rate in Japan, but I think that people are people don't have children uh, after they turn certain age, then they would have the pet animals. And I think that uh, women tend to uh, have this um, deciding power to create values. So women consumers tend to respond to you. And so the women oriented business. So I think that the lifetime value and people live through, throughout uh, this, uh, their lifetime and the, the final end users. So for example, the diapers for the elderly, that means that uh, both men and women consumers would use it. So for them to spend their time comfortably without pain, when you think about that, then maybe the person who uh, is giving the care, nursing care, might be a daughter, a woman. So you are focusing on that consumers as well. I think that the shoppers and users are different categories in business. And also consumers are not, all the consumers are not vocal or opinionated. Babies don't speak, pet animals don't speak, and the elderly, the seniors have difficulty speaking up. So there needs to be somebody who can translate their words. So babies don't say, I like Unitum, please use products made by Unitum. But so the product branding, the traditional way, you would communicate with a product at its center. So as you, Sunoki professor said that we are a hidden global company and the Unicharm corporate branding is necessary in this day. And so our purpose, and so we need to have this major banner and purpose and we need to appeal our corporate branding to our target customers. So in order to maximize our value, then I think that we will be able to increase our efficiency in that way. So we have the, the product brand and the bottom-up manner to uh, create the branding in parallel. So your business itself is contributing to the society. And it seems like your company is a very noticeable and your business expands in Asian countries and emerging countries globally. So you will be able to solve many types of problems. And as I heard that you are creating a diaper to prevent the mosquito bites, the diapers and also baby wipes. We use ingredients, uh, the herbal ingredients like lemongrass. Where did you launch that product? Where 
So based on which country's demand did you create that product? So the dengue fever in hot countries and also the it's the it's uh, it is infected by the uh, mosquitoes and especially in Southeast Asia. And we, when we started the, we developed a program and started selling the product. So there was need. However, they didn't have economic power uh, to buy the products. So we started Malaysia and then expanded into Indonesia and Thailand and Brazil. And Brazil is in South America and they have mosquitoes and we have the anti-mosquito diapers and uh, baby wipes. And I found interesting when I heard about this is that the, the most lethal animal for humans is not the bear, grizzly bear, but uh, the mosquitoes. So solving the problems is done through your business activities and also on a global scale. And so you are implementing this business strategy and I think that you are, have the capability to actually implement that. And that is the key for your business. And I'm sure that you have such, you must put a lot of efforts in human, develop, human resource development. When we expanded our business in Asia, our human resources, our personnel, had history of working in a company for 20 years. So they are in the mid-level or they are in the, uh, their early 20, 40s. And so that's, these are the types of people who ha we had. So the, the, the marketers and developers and designers and also the accountants and also the factory production personnel. So there are five major important functions, and we wanted to have the employees who can actually have these five different functions in a self-sufficient manner. And, and they were capable of executing their work, but they lacked experience of teaching their skills and knowledge to others. So they have this hidden knowledge or so that, that has to be made into an explicit uh, knowledge from the implicit knowledge and uh, unicham has been doing that for a long time so visualizing and so standardize and visualize the hidden and e implicit knowledge into explicit knowledge that can be communicated and on a weekly basis so we had the we developed the strategy for 10 year strategy, five year strategy, three year, one year and six month strategy. And we had the format and we understand the current situation. And then we thought about the ideal situation and we created the specific plans to reach that, the ideal. And on a weekly basis, we executed that, the plan. And we had the PDCA cycle and we found out what the reasons why something went wrong. So the implicit knowledge uh, became explicit and also the standardized. So the employees who actually was just uh, working in a, as an ordinary talent uh, became more capable. And so that's the logic that we developed and we developed the framework and that was expressed digitally so that even young employees, even though they didn't like it because it takes it was troublesome, but they were able to see it and use it. And they were able to make they make uh, improvements and also make amends when something deviates. So it is like an OJT program and I think that people grow and develop on the job. So when they executed the, the framework on the job, then when they look back, they realize that they developed their skills. So we are manufact 
we are manufacturers of the consumables. So I think that uh, in terms of the competitors, we are not that different from our, our competitors. But I, just like the case of Iris Oyama, what consumers feel and the, what they have deep down in their psyche and how to um, visualize and uh, how to prove them uh, in a scientific manner. And we were able to find the ways to do that. And we reflect that in our product development and also product sales. And also we needed to have the employees who can actually implement that. Even if you have a good idea, if your employees don't understand it, then it cannot be executed. So we have, you have this common uh, framework. It must have taken a lot of effort. Of course, it is, is a lot and it takes a lot of effort for employees to execute them. And also, I think that it will keep creating results. But after you started that framework, how long did it take to see the actual results, making the implicit knowledge into explicit ones? And also, it took about 10 years. Young employees didn't like it. And so we had the directors and also the, the uh, managing directors from the top level, we found the ways that it's easier, that it's easy to execute it. And we make sure that there is are no hurdles. And in the end, we executed that framework, uh, even overseas branches. So it's not only about how you position your company and also you focus not only focusing on expanding your business internationally but it seems like your example is is telling us how important it is to execute your framework and plan so thank you very much and congratulations again so these are the interviews of the four top leaders of the for the price winning companies. And they, as I said in the beginning, the Porto Price looks into the quality and also the originality of the strategy. And if you take pride in your company's strategy, please apply to Porto Price. Thank you very much for watching and that's the end of the interviews.